Good evening. My name is Josh. I'm a part of the presentation team and a leader for the 12th grade boys. Yeah! Thank you, buddy. <laughs> so tonight we're going to be looking at the question one of you posed. Why should I give someone else, like God, control of my life? And that's a good question. Why should I do something I don't want to do because somebody else wants me to do it? And the answer is simple. We were created to walk with God. He's the only one who can bring us fulfillment. I was talking to a friend recently, and uh, she brought up a potential job opportunity she wanted to talk to me about. And um, this job is something I, I was very interested in. It's an opportunity I'd been praying about, well, I'd been praying about the opportunity to move forward for a long time. And this would open up many new avenues for me to serve God. So, of course, I was excited. And I began to look forward to all the new possibilities and all the new ways of being able to serve and imagining what it would be like. And instead of becoming more and more excited, I began to feel more and more empty. And I was recently blessed uh, to be able to buy, uh, to be able to get a new place, and I've been working on getting it ready to move into. I've been continuing to serve here and seeing amazing things happening here. And now there's this exciting new possibility, and I'm trying to discover if that's what God's calling me to. But no matter how many good things have been happening in my life, I still felt empty. So I read my Bible, I prayed, I tried investing more time in sitting alone with God, and none of this seemed to give me any relief from that feeling. Then one day, Matt, who you just saw up here doing announcements, bought me a book. It's called God, Where Are You? by John Bevere. And in it, he talks about a time when he couldn't really feel God moving in his life. But God spoke to him in that time, and he asked him, are you seeking me, or are you seeking the mission? And I had to sit back and think and pray about that for a long time. Is that I've been seeking a relationship with God to grow closer to him, or had I just been trying to do work in his name because I love the act of doing it, it does bring me joy. So that brings us to our take-home point, which is the one point I want you to take away, remember, think about later, which is only a life with God will satisfy you. So as I was living through this, I was reminded of a passage in Exodus that I want to read, but before I do it, let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. I thank you for the opportunity to serve you in this way. I pray you will speak through me, get me out of the way, and plant the seeds of your word deep in our hearts that we will continue to seek a deeper relationship with you, setting aside ourselves and just growing closer to you. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. So, in the passage I'm about to read, the Israelites had just rebelled against God. They were traveling through the wilderness, and Moses had gone off to speak with God, and they had created this golden calf to idol, uh, this golden calf idol that they wanted to worship. And uh, this passage happens right after that, as they were approaching the promised land. There's going to be a part in here that I'm just going to summarize because this is a long, a long chapter. But this is Exodus 33. The Lord said to Moses, get going, you and the people you brought up from the land of Egypt. Go up to the land I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I told them I will give this land to your descendants, and I will send an angel before you to drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Go up to this land that flows with milk and honey, but I will not travel among you. For you are a stubborn and rebellious people. And if I did, I would surely destroy you along the way. When the people heard these stern words, they went into mourning and stopped wearing their jewelry and fine clothes. For the Lord had told Moses to tell them, you are a stubborn and rebellious people. If I were to travel with you for even a moment, I would destroy you. Remove your jewelry and fine clothes while I decide what to do with you. So from the time they left Mount Sinai, the Israelites wore no more jewelry or fine clothes. 
Now this part speaks about the tent of meeting. The tent of meeting was a tent set up outside the camp where Moses went to speak in the presence of God, and God spoke to him. He came down in the form of a cloud, met him there, and it says the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. So then we read during one of those conversations, one day Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me take these people to the promised land, but you haven't told me whom you'll send with me. You've told me I know you by name, and I look favorably on you. But if it's true that you look favorably on me, let me know your ways so I may understand you more fully and continue to enjoy your favor. And remember that this nation is your very own people. The Lord replied, I will personally go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Then Moses said, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. How will anyone know that you look favorably on me, on me and on your people, if you don't go with us? For your presence among us sets us apart. Oh, misread that. For your presence among uh, sets your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. The Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed do what you have asked, for I look favorably on you, and I know you by name. Moses responded, then show me your glorious presence. The Lord replied, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will call out my name, Yahweh, before you, for I will show mercy to anyone I choose, and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. But you may not look directly at my face, for no one may see me and live. The Lord continued, look, stand near me on this rock. As my glorious presence passes by, I will hide you in the crevice of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and let you see me from behind, but my face will not be seen. So God spoke to Moses as he would a friend. They had a close relationship, and Moses was not willing to give that up. It can seem kind of crazy to turn down a land where you know you'll flourish, but Moses knew that a life, even a life filled with good food, a good job, safety, and good health, wasn't worth anything if God wasn't with him. He wanted to know God as much as possible. Moses asked to know God's ways and even asked to see him. He knew that knowing God set him and Israel apart from everyone else. No one else had that gift. And Moses put that relationship above everything. So I know you're worried about giving up your life to God and what it will cost you. You have hopes and dreams for your life and you want to be able to accomplish those goals and have those things. But the problem is, none of those things will satisfy you. I have achieved some of the things I wanted for my life. Not all, but some. I have a decent job, I'm getting my new place ready to move into, and I've been able to buy some of the toys I used to always dream about having. And I can tell you that none of those things has ever satisfied me. They're nice, sure. But I never achieved one of those goals or bought one of those things and went, all right, now I'm content. Not once. So I've told this story before, but I hope you'll bear with me. As many of you know, I work at NOC in their technology department, but that wasn't my first choice of job. When I was in college, I wanted to join the military, and I decided on that pretty early on, and began getting in shape, getting ready to join as I finished my degree. So I put years of effort and planning into pursuing that goal. And when I went into the recruitment office after getting my degree and I went to sign up, I found out I was blocked from that path because I have scoliosis. Um, it's bad enough that they knew, or if they knew about it and had it on record, they wouldn't be allowed, I wouldn't be allowed to sign up. So my recruiter offered me the option to say I didn't have scoliosis. So I could either choose to be honest and walk away from years of effort, or to lie and try to choose my own way and proceed with my own plan. And because I chose to follow God's plan, he gave me a job I didn't want, doing things I didn't want to do, working in a place I didn't want to be, and I was miserable. And I mean for years. 
But over time, he got my eyes off myself and my pity party, and he began to show me the reasons he put me there. He showed me the people I had the ability to reach, both teachers and students. And he gave me joy in being able to serve him and others. I've gotten to walk with God in that school, and I've gotten to show him to others there, and I can't tell you how grateful I am that he pulled me off the path I wanted to take and put me onto his. There's no amount of stuff that you can get in this life that will fill the hole in your heart that was created only to be filled by the infinite God. Nothing here will satisfy you. But Jesus said that those that drink the water he offers, meaning being filled with his spirit, will never thirst again. Only God can satisfy. We must keep our eyes on him and surrender to his will. Then we will live the lives we are meant to live. Then we will do the good works that God's word tells us were created in advance for us to do. And it's the only place you'll find contentment. So I'll tell you, personally, I don't care if he leads me somewhere that is cushy and comfortable or somewhere that is difficult and uncomfortable. I can prove that to you by standing up here. I'm not comfortable. <laughs> but as long as as he is there, and I fix my eyes on him, I can be satisfied. And if I'm anywhere he is not, I won't be. Jeez. Oh. So now, when I pray about that job my friend had talked about, I no longer pray, please God, let this be the next step. But I pray, Lord, if you're leading me there, I will go. If you are not leading me there, I will not go. Because no matter how exciting it sounds, if you're not there, I won't be satisfied. I want to be where you are, walking with you, because that's the only life worth living. So our next step is I will read Exodus 33 in full and ask God to show me more of himself. You all brought us these questions that this series has been based on. So I want to encourage you when you get to small group to ask more questions. Ask your leaders what living a fully surrendered life has looked like for them. Ask them if there are any areas that they are still struggling to surrender to God. And then ask yourself the same question. I guarantee for your leaders, surrendering their lives has involved both blessings and challenges. And I'd be willing to bet that just like the Israelites... And just like you, they questioned whether or not it was worth it. Ask them to tell you about that time and, what and why they made the decision to follow him. Then pray together and ask God to lead you closer to him. And if any of you are here tonight and you're finding that the world isn't satisfying you, if you would like to begin living the life God has planned for you, then the first step is to come to Jesus. He doesn't promise that the way will be easy, but he promises that he'll always be there, always working things for the good of those who love him and follow his will in their lives. And no matter how big life's problems get, he tells us he's already overcome it. If you want him, the almighty God walking beside you and fighting for you, then here at New Life, we say it's as simple as A, B, C. A, I admit that I'm a sinner and that I believe in Jesus as my Savior. What? B. I believe in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Lord meaning owner, and Savior meaning he saves us from sin and death. And C. I confess that Jesus is my Lord and Savior, both in my heart and to those around me. So I'm going to pray as if I'm surrendering my life to God for the first time. If you would like to make that decision with me, I pray you'll do that. And if you have already made that decision, pray for someone who hasn't. Lord, I admit to you that I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm not perfect, that I have messed up and fallen short of your plan for me. And I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die for me, to pay the price for my sin. And I confess 
that I am giving my life over to you. I trust in you as Lord and Savior, and I pray you will fill me with your spirit. Guide my life. Guide my steps. Lord, I pray for each one here who has already made that commitment that they would seek you, to know you more, to see you, to know your ways, that we would follow the example of Moses here, not choosing everything that the world has to offer, no matter how enticing, but seeking you and everything you provide because you are our creator. You bring us true fulfillment. We are meant, created to live with you. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your love. I thank you for the sacrifice of your son. I thank you for each one here and the blessing that it is to be here and to be able to enjoy your presence. Please guide us in your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So if you'd like to take that next step with me, we can all say it now. I'll read Exodus 33 and ask God to show me more of himself.